we recognize that God is moving the church out of the buildings and into the community. Our church, Peace Chapel, was built for this. In times like these, the world needs a courageous church. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Our church is a community development church. We've long transitioned from being internally focused to being a church that is culturally relevant while remaining biblically sound. We don't operate based on fear, but we operate based on facts and on faith. What's up, my people? My favorite, favorite, favorite people in this world, my Peace Chapel family. Welcome, welcome back to another amazing Sunday service. If you're new with us today, I want to say thank you and welcome to Peace Chapel. My name is Nate Harris, and every week I come up here and I let you guys know all the exciting things that are going on at this amazing, amazing church. So stay tuned because these are your Peace Chapel announcements. One thing that you need to know about us here at Peace Chapel is that we are a community development church. So we're not here just to give you guys a bunch of words to make sure that you are saved and you get into heaven. We want to make your life better right now as you are living. And so the past couple of weeks, we've been giving out turkeys and doing a lot of ministry work. So I do want to give a shout out to all of the men and the women who have been putting their hands on and really getting out into the community and helping out. I was over at the church the other day and I saw so many people lined up to get turkeys and just get bags of dinner. There was dinner cans, we had um, canned goods, non-perishable goods, there was turkeys given out, and there were so many people that are actually coming to get turkeys. There should be no one that went unfed on Thanksgiving and Peace Chapel, we always have the people and the resources that are out there ready to serve the community. We just need people from the community to come get the resources. Peace Chapel, we're always there and we always show up. So I do want to give a shout out to Peace Chapel because you guys have always been killing it and that's what you're gonna get here at Peace Chapel, a community development church to actually help people here now while they're living, enhance and better their lives. Also, this is next level. I wanna make sure you guys know about our remote learning system. Now, as you guys know, with this coronavirus pandemic, a lot of the kids are not in the schools. But most of the kids that are being affected by this remote learning space and having to learn from home, have to be on Zoom, everyone is doing things different, but I know you need to have access to Wi-Fi. You need to have an area at home where you need to be a quiet and a safe space. An area where there's not other kids running around, your siblings are running around. We have that here at Peace Chapel. With Rebuild California Alliance with Ryder and Pastor Fitz, all you have to do is reach out to them and you can bring your child over. They will have a space where they can learn distraction free. They will have Wi-Fi, they will have people to help them guide them, and you can bring them over from nine to five, Monday through Friday, okay? So if you're interested, if you still have to go to work and you can't take your child to school, reach out. If you're someone that you're still at home working, but you want to have your child in a, in a safe space where they're away from maybe their friends, their siblings, or chaos that's going on in the house, we have a spot for them. But we want to make sure our kids are able to still grow and still learn while they're going through this pandemic time. And as we all know that this has been hard for everyone, parents, kids, siblings, we want to create a space that kids can still learn, they can still grow, and the pandemic is not stopping us from being the best that we can be. Amen? Before I let you guys go, I just want to remind you guys that Pastor Fitz is doing some administration work and he's getting ready for you guys, but he's going to be back next week with an amazing, amazing message on temptation. So make sure you're here next week because he's going to deliver. I love you, Peace Chapel, and I got to go give y'all the word, so I will see y'all in the message. I love you. Be patient. Let the
Nowadays, it's all about the apps. You want a pizza at two in the morning? There's an app for that. Want to get a deal on fixing the brakes on your car? Well, there's an app for that too. But what about an app that helps you get closer to God? That would be a great app, right? Well, luckily for you, if you're watching this, you're about to be introduced to that very app that will not only get you closer to God, but introduce you to a community of people that are seeking God and striving to be the best versions of themselves. The Peace Chapel app is easy to use, easy to download, and it's free. All you have to do is text Peace Chapel app to 31996 and wait for a text to come back. In that text, you'll find a link to the App Store or Google Play, depending on which kind of phone you have. Then just press download and boom, you'll have one of the most important apps for your spiritual life. In the app, you can get notifications on what's going on at Peace Chapel and learn about various biblical topics like love and forgiveness. You can also support the church right in the app by clicking the Give button. Also, you can dive deeper into previous sermons with discussion questions and notes. In these times that we live in, this app is a godsend because it not only helps you stay connected to a community of Christians, but it also helps you stay connected to the source. So go ahead and download the Peace Chapel app today. It's a must-have on your phone and will help you in your Christian walk. Yo, what's up, Peace Chapel? Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another amazing Sunday service here at Peace Chapel. I'm so honored to be here again. P Pastor calls me up here. Literally, I believe it's the weeks where he feels like he wants to be lazy and doesn't want to come preach. He calls me and say, Nate, you go up there and you talk to those people up there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, that's not the case, but I'm truly honored to be here. I always tell you guys, I'm not qualified. I shouldn't be here. And what I'm speaking to you guys about today 
It's really, really funny because I am the least qualified in this, but because of that, and I go through this a lot, I actually am qualified to speak on this. But um, again, if you don't know who I am, my name is Nate Harris. Typically, I'm doing the announcement. But if you're new with us today, I just want to tell you guys welcome. You know, this church here at Peace Chapel is an amazing church. You're going to absolutely love everything that you've gotten here. But please, before we go forward, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and share this broadcast with at least one of your friends. Okay? You can share it with 10 of them. You can share it tomorrow. You can share it in a week. But if you don't like this information, you don't like this content, you don't have to share it with them. It's all good. Okay, We, we, we still love you and we still want you guys to be here. But we're in this series called Life in an App, okay? And we have a million, a gazillion apps on our iPhone, and these apps are designed to make our life easier, more efficient, organize them up a little bit. But see, we've been trying to get people to understand, and some people don't believe in the Bible because they believe it's fake and it's all made up, and I get all that, okay? But if you open up this Bible, there's so much wisdom inside of the Bible, and there's so many applications inside of the Bible that if you add them to your life, your life actually will become easier, more efficient, and you can organize your life a lot better. Now, if you know who I am, if you, if you know anything close to me, a lot of people think I'm, I'm, I'm tight edge, right? Or I'm uptight at times, or I'm always stressed out. And a lot of times, I'm always in a stressed situation because I'm impatient. I'm literally impatient. And what I've been trying to get people to understand, and we need to understand, is that these phones right here, all the apps that we think that are making our lives easier, all the apps that make it seem like our lives are more efficient, when we could call Uber and have them there in a second, these things are actually our biggest enemy, okay? These are leading us down a process which we call instant gratification. Now, I know you guys have heard this term many, many, many times, okay? But with these phones, again, I can call Uber and food will be there when I'm done with the message. I can post a picture on Instagram and I can see if I look good right now and I can get that instant feedback. If I want to get information um, about anything in the world, all I got to do is go to Google and I can have the answer right now when I'm arguing with somebody when it comes to politics. Everything is at the tip of our fingers. Amazon is currently uh, in investing in drone technology because their customers can't wait one more day to get their, their product that they bought. We have to think about what this is doing to us, guys. We are literally creating a society that is not for delayed gratification. All we are here for is instant gratification. Now, and if you know anything about instant gratification or you know anything about delayed gratification, we know that delayed gratification is actually what breeds greatness. We know that there's no thing that happens overnight. There's no such thing as success overnight, even though social media is telling us otherwise. Even though the society that we're living in right now is telling us otherwise, we cannot do things overnight. There's a quote that I read from a Stanford study, and it states that employers have commented that young people joining the workforce now expect everything to be given to them. They don't necessarily expect to work for their rewards, and they don't expect to take the time to build up their skills. Now, I know they're talking about you millennials. I be sometimes so embarrassed to even call myself a millennial. And I know Generation Z is next, but gosh, like, I feel like nobody wants to work for anything. Now, I'm somebody that I don't mind working. You know, when I was like 24, I said, look, everybody judge me when I'm 35. And the reason why I said that wasn't because I was willing to wait until I was 35, until I got all the things that I wanted, but I knew that it was going to be a process, okay? And, and I knew that me as a person, I'm an impatient person. I don't mind waiting for things, but I don't mind putting in extra work to speed up that process, okay? So, so that's kind of where I live in. So I'm big on being patient and developing your skills. I'm big on being patient for you to get a promotion in the job. I'm big on being patient in those areas, but when it comes to it, I work so hard, I don't want to wait for the patience. But see, where, where are we at in our world? Where are you at? Some different ways that we are impatient can be very, very, very scary. But a quote I want to read to you guys, it says that learning patience can be a difficult experience, but once conquered, you will find life easier. So let's define patience. 
Let's define patience because the application of patience, if you add that to your life, when you add it to your bag, this can literally change your life. So the definition of patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Okay. Again, patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Key word, without getting angry or upset. Now, I've been waiting patiently for four years for a lot of things to happen, okay? Now, I've, I've wanted a, a specific job in the pharmaceutical um, industry. I wanted, I wanted a specific job in the media industry. I wanted to make X amount of dollars. I wanted to be married at this time. I had been patient for a lot of things in my life, and you probably have too, right? But imagine you've been patient for two years and you finally got your iPhone and you said, oh my gosh, I have my iPhone. I, I've been patiently waiting for two years. Or, or finally God brings you your husband and you're like, oh my gosh, I finally got my husband. I've been patiently waiting for eight years. No, you haven't. You've been lying. Don't lie. We ain't got time to lie today. You ain't got to lie to the Lord. You haven't been patient because that whole time when you were waiting, you were complaining. The whole time that you were waiting, uh, waiting you were bitter. The whole time that you was waiting, you was angry. So no, you weren't patiently waiting. You was just waiting because God works in his own time. The universe works in his own time. And it's going to be that anyway. But you were mad that whole time. And so today, I want us to focus on the getting upset and getting angry while we are being patient when we're waiting for the things that we want in our lives. Like I said, I know where we're at in our world, y'all. Okay? I want everything right now. I want to be the, 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 most, the biggest entrepreneur in teaching people how to make money right now. I want to be the bi biggest media correspondent um, giving information to people. I want to have a, a huge farm. I want to have 10 uh, duplexes in the real estate world. Like, there's so many things that I want to accomplish, and I want them to be accomplished right now. But let's talk about the benefits of patience. Let's talk about the benefits of patience, because I understand, y'all, I'm with you guys, and I want things to happen right now, and I work hard enough to make them happen right now, but let's talk about the benefits of patience. Number one, it reduces stress levels. <laughs> Again, if you know somebody like me, Nate, somebody, it seems like he's always stressed. Seems like he's uptight a lot of the times. But see, I'm really not. But the issue with me comes because when I'm impatient, I get angry and stressed when my day gets out of whack. I, every day my day is scheduled out perfectly. In the morning I'm waking up and I'm meditating. By eight I'm eating this breakfast. At nine I'm starting this, this job and this work. At this time I'll be awesome and I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. But then when one thing gets moved 30 minutes back and then this gets moved 30 minutes back and then I gotta wait for this to happen and then I gotta wait for that person to happen, that's when I get impatient. That's when I start to stress. Because I'm having anxiety that my schedule, my day is so off that if I just be patient, bro, like, it's okay. You don't have to do the video today. Like, you don't have to um, edit that today. You don't have to read that whole book today. Like, it's okay, Nate, relax. Be patient. You don't have to do everything today. And once I added that to my life, I reduced stress levels a lot. The second one is it results in better decision making. Now, I remember a couple years ago, I graduated college, and I really, really needed a car. And at the time, my brother already got a car. Sister already got a car. I was the only one without a car. And I needed a car so bad because I'm back in L.A. I wanted to start driving Uber. I wanted to start making money in different ways. And I needed a vehicle to be able to get around the world. But I was so impatient to get a car. And I had a plan to get a Kia. And the reason why I wanted a Kia because I knew that it would last me a long time. Kias typically are great cars when it comes to maintenance, all that good stuff. But on the way to me buying my Kia, we stopped at Chrysler before. And when I, when I got the Chrysler, I saw this beautiful Chrysler. had leather interior. The, uh, it had the, the touchscreen navigation. It was beautiful. But I knew that this was not going to be good when it comes to maintenance. I knew that if it got into an accident, it may never recover. But I didn't care. I was impatient because I wanted that car right then and there. And so instead of making a sound decision, I made an impulsive decision. And to this day, I'm still paying for a car that had to be recalled and totaled and was gone. And the maintenance and the parts were so expensive. All because I didn't want to be patient. The third one is it helps you develop understanding, empathy, and compassion. 
Now, when you're inpatient, when you're dealing with somebody who may have, have a disability, or maybe somebody who, who can't pay their rent um, and they can't have their jobs right, or somebody who maybe has, um, uh, um, is homeless, somebody, maybe a child, when you're patient with these individuals, now you are, you're allowing yourself to actually truly get to know them, understand their situation. Everyone doesn't have the same situation that you have. Now, I've been blessed in my life, but half of my life, I didn't even know how blessed I was in my life until I actually started being patient with other people. Because I'm like, well, why can't you just get that done? Why can't, why can't you just start that business? Why can't you just do this or do that? But when you dig deeper behind the surface level, what we talked about last week, you start to understand, hmm, okay. And it helps you develop empathy for other people. And then fourth, it helps you understand and appreciate the process of growth. I've been growing for the past four years, and I love growing. And when I see other people and I see them growing, I, I, I enjoy it. Because the process of growth is a patient process. It cannot happen overnight. And as long as you continue to grow every single day and you're patient about it, I guarantee you're going to start appreciating and seeing other people's growth. If I see someone that's 10 years older than me or 10 years behind me, it doesn't matter where their mind is at when it comes to education. It doesn't matter where their mind is at when it comes to their knowledge of the Bible or their spirituality or, or their knowledge when it comes to finance or their knowledge when it comes to understanding themselves or where they're at when it comes to a drug addiction or alcohol addiction. Everyone is different. Okay? I can't teach people how to understand Christianity or, or the Bible in a day. So instead of saying, oh, that person isn't on my level, or oh, that person is way above my level, just understand that it's all a journey, and everybody moves in that journey in a different pace. It's okay. But once you learn to be patient, you trust and you're going to fall in love with the process of growth, and you're going to be excited as you watch other people grow, and you're going to be patient as they grow, and it's the most beautiful thing to ever see. So let's talk about the areas in our life where we become impatient. And this is kind of funny. Now, one is flight delays. Don't you guys hate when you get to the airport, right, and you're supposed to go off at 1030, and you get there at 1030, and they say, oh, the flight delay is an hour. Now, if you really look at the grand scheme of things, the hour really isn't that long, right? But, but when you're waiting for that plane, when your plane is delayed, that one hour feels like 12 hours, right? And so one way that we can be impatient is flight delays. The second way is when you have to wait for your favorite show to come back. Don't you hate when, when it's the last season of a show and it's like the best season and they end it like with leaving you so clueless what's about to happen next, right? And now you have to wait six months, you have to wait a year for that show to come back for you to see what happens next. I hate waiting in that place and that's when I'm almost the most impatient. And, and see, now it's funny because they're now doing mid-season breaks. It'll be, it'll be episode seven of Power, and all of a sudden they'll go on a mid-season break for the next two months. I'm like, time out, time out, time out, time out. I'll be wanting to call 50 Cent, call like, look, put it out today. Put it out today. <laughs> right? The next one is COVID-19. <laughs> COVID-19. Nobody wants to be patient for COVID-19 to go away. People want their vaccines. I don't want it, but some people want their vaccines. Some people want to be let out the house. Some people are done with the lockdown. Some people are impatient when it comes to COVID-19. You can be impatient when it comes to traffic. Nobody likes waiting in traffic, right? Nobody likes waiting in traffic. Again, traffic may not be something that takes that long, but it's just the fact that you're in traffic, it makes you impatient, right? DMV. Nobody likes being at the DMV. When you're at the DMV, you may be there for an hour, maybe two hours, sometimes maybe six hours. But again, no one likes being patient at the DMV. And then again, I think this might be the, one of the most important ones. But when you call your internet service provider, or when you call somebody for some service, and you're on that hole, and you just hear the music, and then you hear the music keep playing again, and then the music dies, and it like kind of gets silent for a second, and you think someone's going to pick up, and then you realize it's dead again. <laughs> oh, and it starts playing again. And so those are some areas in our life where we can become impatient. But see, in James chapter 5, verse 7 through 12, James is actually magnificent in the way that he breaks down patience. 
And so he gives us three specific illustrations and three times that we need to be extra patient, okay? So I gave you guys so, so a couple different areas in our life where we can become impatient, and they're kind of some funny areas. Everywhere in our life, we need to try to exercise patience, okay? When we exercise patience, it leads us to success, making better decisions um, and seeing a clearer picture, okay? That's why we want to be patient. But James says there's three illustrations that we need to be extra patient, okay? Now, the first one is, when circumstances are uncontrollable, James 5, 7, Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. What he's doing here is he's using the illustration of a farmer. Now, as we know, farmers, they plant their seeds in one season, and then they have to wait. They don't know when the rain is coming. They don't know when the sun is coming. They don't know that when they actually harvest their crops, who's going to come buy it, or if they have someone they're going to distribute it to. They don't know these things. But they still have to put them seeds in the ground. They still have to do the work and sow it, and they still have to just sit and wait patiently. And sometimes the rain comes late in the season, and it looks like the rain may never come. But they know from history they know that God has always provided because they can recount last year God brought the rain. The year before God brought the rain. The year before that God brought the rain. God has always came through and provided. So why would he not provide this year? Why would he not provide this year? And so what they're doing is these, this is a time where you must exercise extra patience when things are out of your control. I've been, I've been really getting interested in investing in the stock market, right? And in the stock market, there's, there's two different seasons. There's bear seasons and then there's bull seasons. Now, in the bear season, that's when all the stocks are low. You can buy, that's when you're doing all the work. You're buying stocks, you're researching the stocks, you're seeing which stocks are going to go up in value. This is when you're putting in the work. In the bull run, that's when the stocks are going up. You're reaping the benefits, you're cashing out, you're getting your money, everything is good, okay? But see, in the bear market, you don't know how long that bear market is going to be. Sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's a year, sometimes it's two years, sometimes it is three years. But it's not in your control. Now, again, you can sit there and you look at the stock market and you can be angry and you can cuss it out. You can say all these meetings, you can do all, it all. But it's not going to change anything because it is out of your control. Control which you can control. I know you heard that one before. Control what you can control. And don't let anything else stress you out. COVID-19. A lot of you guys might have wanted to travel this year. A lot of you guys may have started a new business this year. A lot of you guys may have lost your business this year because of COVID-19. And everybody is frustrated right now. Everybody is irritated right now. Everybody wants to get out the house right now. But guys, this is out of our control. There is nothing that you can do about COVID-19 right now. It's out of your control. Yeah, you can say, well, we'll fight the governor. That's different, okay? But COVID-19 is not in your control. So stop stressing yourself out about COVID-19. The second one is when people are unchangeable, okay? So the first reason is um, when you have no control over your circumstances, be patient. The second one is when people are unchangeable. And this one is funny to me. James 5.10. For examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Now in this one, he's illustrating a prophet. Now if you know anything about the Old Testament prophets, like if you think about Isaiah, Isaiah preached for 60 years. 60 years. And for the most of the time, those people were rejecting his message. They didn't want to hear the things that Isaiah was saying. Nobody wanted to convert to Christianity and hear those things. But the prophets had to go and they had to continue to speak. They continued to preach. They continued to prophesy about our Lord. And I know that we all are going through this, okay? Especially with politics. And I'm getting frustrated myself because we have Donald Trump, we have Joe Biden. I don't care about anyone, but I'm getting frustrated with people. I'm getting frustrated with people because I feel like the games that they're playing on us is right in our face. I feel like it's clear as day. 
And I'm looking at people and I'm screaming at people, trying to show them the light, but a lot of them can't see it. And so I'm getting frustrated with myself. I'm getting so angry, like, what, how? Why can't they understand the games that they're playing on us right now? But then I had to think back. About four years ago, a lot of the stuff that I'm putting out into the world now, people were telling me about four years ago. And even though I had an open mind, even though I wanted to receive the information, I still couldn't see it. Because people are going to change when people are ready to change. You may have a sibling who is a drug addict, your child, someone who, who may be a gang member, living life uh, in a way that you don't agree with, and you, you want to save them, you want to help them, because they don't know that the path that they're going down is a path of self-destruction. And you want them to change. I'm asking you, please be patient with them, because they will come around. God will have an answer for that individual. But as we're, as we're fighting with people and we're going back and forth about politics and, and this side is trying to tell this side what to think and this side is trying to get this side to understand. Be patient with people. As Christians, I know it's hard for us right now. I know it's hard um, to try to get people to come to church. Try to get people to submit their life to the Lord. I know it's hard because a lot of people, it's, to them it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I follow God. It doesn't matter if I follow Jesus. Your life isn't better than my life right now, so why, why would I go? I get it. Every time I bring up God, it's a conflict. But God and James is telling us, be patient. You continue to go. You continue to talk about Jesus. You continue to give the word of God. You continue to love people. You continue to do right because the Lord is coming. He calls you to be patient with these people because if you give up on them too early, they may be gone forever. The third one is, when our problems are unexplainable. James 5.11 says, we give great honor to those who endure, endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, the man of great endurance. Now, I'm not going to get crazy into Job's story, right? But when things happen in our lives that are unexplainable, the first thing we want to do is blame God. And so he's giving an illustration on this one. The first one was when your, your, your systems are uncontrollable. You can't control things, be patient, okay? And the second one is when you can't control people. You can't change people. Be patient with those people. And the third one is when God keeps throwing things in your life that are unexplainable. Be patient with God. Because we've all been here. Think about Job. Job lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his finances. Anything that was dear to Job, he lost. But, but see, his frustration came with, was with the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm doing everything right. Like, like, like I'm trying hard. I'm loving people. I'm going to church. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving to the world. Why do bad things in my life still happen? Why, are you, why did you allow my mother to be taken from me? Why did you allow Kobe Bryant to be taken from us? Why are you allowing children to be sex trafficked across the world? Why? We don't understand the things. Why? James is telling us to be patient because the Lord is near. Okay? A lot of times you can't, you can't explain the things that are going on in your life. But God always has a plan. God has other children. You think about your life so much, he has other children. I always tell people, I am the only pharmaceutical rep in Los Angeles for my company, okay? Now, I could have been applying for this job for 10 years. And I'm looking at God like, God, why won't you let me have the job? Well, the guy that's in the position has been praying to keep the job. <laughs> like, God, like, God can't just take away his blessing and give it to you. Because God's like, hold on, I have something else for you. Just be patient. Be patient. James 5, James 5, 11. And as you can see, how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. Like I said, guys, God, I don't know what you're going through in your life right now. I don't know if you're somebody who's tithing every single week. You're somebody who's giving to the church. Somebody who's at church serving Somebody who's loving God and talking to him every single day. Somebody who's doing the right thing, has high character, working hard every single day. But things just keep going bad. And you can't explain them. And even as I'm saying this, you're like, yeah, whatever. God, he ain't answering my prayers. 
I promise you, God always will show up, but just on his time, it's not about your time. Now, I'm going to go through a lot of people that were in the Bible that had to wait. They had to be patient. You aren't the only one. Stop being selfish. It ain't about you. Guys makes everybody wait. But see, the issue is most people give up before God actually comes and answers, right? Now, as I was talking about the stock market, I could have put $20 in the stock market while I was in the bear market. And I waited in that stock market for three years. Three years. So it got to the point, all right, man, this ain't happening. It ain't going to happen. Let me take my money out. And when you take the money out, immediately the st stock skyrockets. You know how much money that you just lost? Because you weren't patient enough. Think about the, 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 the gold digger as he's digging gold for years and years and years, and he's digging gold to the point where he said, you know what? This ain't going to work. But he was a foot away from touching the gold. I remember, like I said, in the pharmaceutical industry, I kept applying for a particular job. For three years, I was applying for this job. To the point where I said, you know what? I'm over it. I literally said, God, I'm done. I'm releasing this. I don't want to keep trying here because I feel like I'm wasting my time and this is not something that I believe that you've called me to do. So maybe you are blocking it from me. I said, I'm not gonna apply to no more pharmaceutical jobs. And in three months, I got a call from the position that I'm working in now. But see, if I wasn't patient, if I wasn't patient enough, I could have missed it. So I'm asking you guys to be patient with God. Do not give up on God because I promise you, if you quit on him too early, you're going to reap, you're not going to reap all the benefits that he has in store for you. So Noah, who alone found grace in the eyes of the Lord, toiled for 120 years, performing a seamless, seamless yeah, I don't know how to say the word, unnecessary and unimportant work. Moses, having grown up prestigiously in Pharaoh's presence, fled to the backside of the desert until he was 80 years old before God visited, taking him from obscurity to greatness. David, anointed king over Israel as a young man, didn't assume the throne for more than a decade. After his victory over Goliath, he spent years on the run, hiding out in caves from King Saul. He mostly lived in obscurity, surviving in wilderness. Joseph, his father's favorite son, clearly chosen by God, was thrown in jail because of a false report of Potiphar's wife. He spent time in the prisons of Egypt, wondering if he would ever see the light of the day again, completely forgotten. Elijah was hidden in, hidden in the brook. He remained camped there in the company of ravens, which God used to feed him. Much of his chadron and stem dried up, but God used it to ready Elijah for the next phase. John the Baptist, a great voice, spent most of his adult life in the wilderness. No distinction, no prominence, place of uh, ministry, no acceptance by the masses, no ye only years of silence, solitude, and obscurity. Paul, educated above the common man with a resume that secured prominence, prominence went from the company of the Shandarin to escaping in the basket under cover of darkness. Do you see what all these men had to go through? They all had to go through extreme amount of patience. They all had to trust in the Lord. But one thing that I know about all these men, they never gave up on the Lord. They didn't give up on their stocks yet. They didn't give, they didn't give up on him yet. And so what happened is he finally pre prevailed. And we know this, guys. We know that there's no true such thing as an overnight success. We know this. And, and they have the new term they call 15 minutes of fame right now in social media. I always tell people I have to be patient because the impact that I want to put onto the world through social media is far more than just an entertainment factor, okay? So, Nate, you have to be patient to garner your following. Why? Because I want to do it the right way. I tell people, don't sell your soul. When I say that, I mean, don't just get on social media, take all your clothes off because you see them making money and getting followers right now. That is not going to last. It's like building your house on sand. It's not solid foundation. Be patient. I know you want to get the promotion right now, but you're not ready for the promotion. God is protecting you. Be patient. 
I know you want to be a CEO. I know you want to start your own new business and be an entrepreneur. I get it, but God is blocking it right now because you are not ready mentally for it. Be patient. I know you want to be in front of the world in the media, but be patient because you have not had enough education to really lead and teach people. See, a lot of you guys have to understand that God is working on y'all. God is taking you through a process and he's molding and he's developing you and he's creating you into a beautiful diamond. We see, a lot of us aren't patient enough to even understand that. And you want things to happen right now. Because you're looking around, right, left, right, left, social media, up, down. You're looking everywhere. And you see people winning over here, you see people winning over here. And so you try to engage in acts that aren't for you. And then you quit on God before God even gave you the blessing that he was going to give you. He was going to give you everything that you wanted. Everything that you asked for. But it needed to happen on his time and his way. But you want it to happen on your time and your way. I don't know what it is, whether it's you believe in God, you believe in the universe, whatever you do, okay, whether you, God and the universe is separate, whether they, whatever it is, they move on their own time. It's not about your time. Like I said, with the stock market, there's seasons. When it comes to gardening and farming, there's seasons. When it comes to basketball, there's seasons. There's seasons for everything. There's seasons to be happy and there's seasons to be down. Just be patient through all of the seasons so your mind can be clear so you can make very, very sound decisions of where you want to go. You pray to God all the time and you say, God is not answering my prayers. God is answering every one of your prayers. God is not answering them in the way that you have seen them and envisioned them. So you may not like it. There's a point of time that I said, God, I want to be preaching and, 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 and educating people and changing people's lives. I always tell you guys, I don't want to be a pastor, but he keeps putting me here. So, so it's like, I can sit here and say, God has not answered my prayers, but like, dude, yes, he has. <laughs> I'm not going to keep you guys for too much longer, but I do want to wrap up with this. I just want to remind you guys that um, being impatient, instant gratification, rather than living in patience and delayed gratification, that right there, a little dichotomy, is the difference between you becoming successful, you becoming unsuccessful. You living a happy life, you living a sad life. You um, loving people, and you not loving people. You allowing yourself to suffer, you not, like, it's literally that serious. You must learn to become patient. Nothing happens overnight, and some of the best things that were created, built, happen through a process of being patient, Letting things just come to you. So again, as I conclude, James let us know. There's three areas that we need to be extra patient. Everywhere in our life, but three areas that we need to be extra patient. And the first one is when things are out of your control. When things are out of your control, don't stress out. Just do your work, do what you can control, and just let all the chips fall where they fall. God already knows the answers. The universe already knows the answers. There ain't no point to stress yourself out. Just put in the work and let everything else happen. The second one is when you're dealing with people. And there's so many different personalities out there, so many different individuals. Like I said, we've been fighting with people when it comes to politics. Some people have some information. Other people have other information. People are at different levels of knowledge. People are at different levels of growth. People have different levels of patience. Like, we're everywhere. So just be patient with people. Understand where people are coming from. I understand why people are do the things that they do. Be patient with them, and I guarantee it will help you out in the long run. And the last one is when our problems are unexplainable. Be patient with God, okay? I know that God is operating on a level that you guys can't understand. I can't understand, so I didn't mean it like that. That we cannot understand. And stop stressing yourself out trying to understand it. But just know everything is for a reason, okay? God is molding you. So when he took someone out of your life, he didn't do it to punish you. When he, when he put that bad thing into your life, he didn't do it to punish you. He's trying to prepare you. Or are you trying to test you to see if, he, if you're ready to go to that next step? So when these things are happening in your life, y'all, embrace them. Let them come in. Enjoy them and love them because God is working on you. Because like I read all of these uh, men in the Bible, God put them through a lot. 
because he knew that they can withstand and he knew that they would come through. Do you just come to church just to get the benefits from God? Or do you come to church to try to get to a level to make sure that you put him on a pedestal? I love you so much, Peace Chapel. Again, I'm so honored and humbled to be here, honored to even be speaking to you guys about patience. But before we get into this last worship song, I do want to say a prayer, and I do want to thank each and every one of you guys. You do have an opportunity to still share this broadcast. If you like this message, and you think this message can help anyone out there, Send this message over to them because it could be your opportunity to invite somebody to church and save a soul. Also hit that like button. Subscribe to make sure that you're updated with all the content that we're going to be producing. Again, my name is Nate Harris, but again, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. But forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Believe, uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I love you, peace, apple.
church should be easy and hassle-free, even when you're not at service. No cash, no checkbook, no problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. If you can send a text message, you can give to your church no matter where you are. Simply text GIVE to your church's text giving number and follow the easy setup instructions. You're done. You'll receive a text and email confirmation of your gift. Save the number and from now on, just text an amount and hit send. It's that easy. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Text GIVE now to your church's giving number and get started today. Text Giving with Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. <laughs> 